So sometimes I'll, you know, discover things or do an experiment and the outcome will be something that will like even shock me, right? I'll be like, wow, like this is completely off the rails and unexpected to even me. And then when those instances happen, that's when I run it like 50 times before I show it to anybody, right? Like I run it up and down in every single way possible to make 100% sure that like, okay, like this is 100% on the right track. Like I'm, uh, you know, all of this actually like checks out, the math checks out, right? Uh, and I do all of that, like, especially on experiments like, 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 um, for example, being able to reconstruct a data set without the data set, <laughs> like very explicitly, right? When I uh, started like diving into AI geometry and K for this neighbors and things like that. And then so I release these things and I, I like I expect like a lot of people, like a large amount of people be like, oh, this is just, you know, some crazy guy who doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. Like he's just pulling things out of thin air. Who knows? Right. <laughs> like uh, and then like to, uh, be, I know that like um, there's going to be another subset of where it's just I wait for research to come out that is like in support of essentially what I've found. Right. Uh, to me, that's the easiest predictor. Right. If I'm actually right on these things, then more people will discover them. And then I just wait for that. And it, it happens a lot. <laughs> so uh, in this instance, we have this paper, which was published March 26, 2025. It's called TS inverse, a gradient inversion attack tailored for federated time series forecasting models. And this is uh, very bad news for you overall, your data and your data security. And I don't know a simpler way to put this, which is that they have invented a different method and a new method on top of my method to reconstruct data without a data set. Their method is strong. And then when you combine it with my method, it's I mean, like, uh, there's no data security anymore <laughs> is the bottom like their experiment utilizes time series data very specifically right and then so a lot of these experiments like these the their method that they use has been known to work for um like convolutional networks meaning like images but it hasn't been known to work with um series data and like so time series data and then so if it works with time series data you can make, get it to work with anything it's just a matter of uh dialing it right right and then so uh, their method very specifically operates off of inverse of gradient descent, which is uh, very ironic. And then like a whole bunch of things around that to me. Right. Because like the thing is, is so gradient descent is a very simplistic method and we don't understand 100 percent why it works. And then so, of course, um, all they do in this instance is just literally the inverse of the method. Right. Um, like who would have thought that it would work? Well, who would have thought that gradient descent would work, right? Like, I mean, when you don't know uh, about these things overall, and then you just move fast and break stuff, this is kind of the problems <laughs> and areas that you run into, to me is how I look at it, right? So gradient descent is, a very, so uh, data is represented as a 4D topological graph, which is hard, like it's impossible to like actually represent like on, on a, um, like, in the like visual format, which makes it hard for your brain to actually visualize what 40 looks like, what a 40 structure looks like, right? But essentially, you take a 40 structure, and then within the 40 structure of the data set, it has peaks and valleys. And then so one of those valleys is the ultimate valley, for whatever reason, it's like the global valley, right? The the uh, black hole where like, uh, it, it goes the deepest and furthest deeper down than any other valley within that data set. And then you just essentially tell gradient descent, find, try to find that valley and then go towards the exact opposite, <laughs> wherever the uh, exact opposite is, uh, then you'll be good. And then that's how we train the models, right? And then so that's loss. Uh, what this method does very specifically is it just takes a model and then it trains it off of the opposite. So instead of saying go the furthest away from the gradient, just, okay, we want to know, like, we want to reverse that process, go down the black hole, <laughs> essentially. And then, so the model trains on that. And then when you combine that, uh, the model is able to 
fully reconstruct and and predict the full gradient essentially like the the you know from the the bottom of the gradient to the top of the gradient without any usage of the data set or any knowledge of the actual data set whatsoever it's just reconstructing the actual gradient itself <laughs> and and that that um, that loss equation right and then that's all it's doing is just reconstructing off of the shape of the loss equation essentially overall within this and then so uh what this means very simplistically is is like what i've been saying for months now and hopefully it's getting clearer and clearer in that um there's no restrictions overall with regards towards data like data is a human construct overall i can't stress that enough uh any sort of protections that you put into the data layer aren't going to work because the models operate one layer below the data layer as we're seeing in instances like this they don't they're operating off of like gradient descent gradient inversion etc which is uh, abstraction of the data set i can't say that and i can't stress that enough right you don't need the actual data set itself <laughs> you need an abstraction of the data set what what does this mean in very simplistic terms? And as simplistic terms as I can state it, if you put your data into an LLM model or into an AI model, there is a way to extract that data. <laughs> I can't put that into more simplistic terms. No matter what you want um, the data to be or, or how you do it, the data can be reconstructed. And in this instance and in, in this experiment, what they're doing very specifically <laughs> is they're also taking data that has been like um anonymized already and like um let's say like hipaa compliant data uh and then feeding it through models using this mechanism and then it's able to essentially like reconstruct the patterns of the person from like the uh like the like uh hipaa compliant data and things like that right so i mean there's literally like uh no uh kind of encryption that you can put on um data sets overall right and then so um let's go ahead and dive into the the proof of this because i've done it before right <laughs> and then so uh, I'm going to give you essentially uh, three algorithms uh, in this particular instance. So this particular notebook is uh, how to reconstruct a data set without the data set. And then so this uh, title of the notebook is Time Series Inversion via Gradient Matching and Quantile Guided Optimization. This notebook demonstrates an advanced gradient inversion, inversion framework to reconstruct time series inputs from the gradients of a trained neural network model. The goal is to reverse engineer a time series sample based solely on the gradients it induces during training. An important concept in privacy attacks, model explainability, and theoretical understanding of neural networks. Uh, key components went to this. We're going to use time series data, so I'm going to create a time series simulation. We're going to create a feed-forward model. Uh, we're going to extract the gradients from the model. We're going to utilize gradient inversion in order to do so. And we're going to reconstruct it. Um, we're going to use one-shot analytical reconstruction in order to see how well we do. And then we're going to evaluate that. And I'm, I have some nice visuals in order to do that. And then so first thing is that we create our data set here. And then we create our model uh, that we're going to extract the data from. <laughs> and then we uh, compute our gradients so that we can understand what we want, like, uh, like, so the model can learn. And then like, so our model that we're going to use to extract from the model can also learn. Uh, and then we create our gradient inversion model, which is the model that's going to, like, you know, uh, rip off the, the model, <laughs> essentially. Uh, and then so in this instance, how like this, this um, process works overall, right, you're going to notice here, we're creating an auxiliary data set, and then we're computing auxiliary gradients. And then we're training off of that, like, so Think of the data set like a key, right? Uh, and then, so what we do is we take the key um, and then we know what the shape of the key is. And then we insert a blank key, which is this, our, our, our auxiliary data set, which is just like bogus data. Uh, and then we shape our, like we cut our blank key, we're, like we're slicing and, and cutting the key to the shape of the real key. Um, and then so uh, that's all we're doing is, is based off of the gradients. And this is all based off of the gradients, right? So just knowing the um, reverse and the inverse, the inverse and the forward gradient, we're able to 
cut the we know the shape of the key and so we just cut the shape you know and it runs to the machine it cuts the shape and then we get a copy of the key and then we just plug the key in and it, it starts the car <laughs> and that's basically how, how this works overall right um, and that's this whole entire process uh, and, and, and that's what happens there that's what you do very simple I mean it's not hard to do overall uh, and then this first attempt, so this is the first attempt and this attempt isn't good, right? Um, so this is like good for you overall because it means that like our, our key would uh, not be a perfect match. Like like um, we need to, we have some work to do with, with copying the key, which is fine. So then we'll do some tests. We, we make some tweaking to some of the logic within here. Uh, we beef it up. Uh, and then and now we have a much better key, right? Now this key is, is a lot better than, than the first key. Uh, and it's getting closer. Like uh, 0.43, we want it closer to, to zero. Like the closer to zero, the better. Uh, but it's under five, so that's good. Um, under 0.5. Um, but I can actually make this better. So as I've mentioned before, as I mentioned at the top of this, and I've mentioned before, like I can um, utilize my own methods in order to reconstruct data sets uh, without the data set. My method is called k furthest neighbors. <laughs> and then so uh, very simplistically, I just take their method, this TS inverse method, and then I add k furthest neighbors to it. Uh, and then all of a sudden it becomes the Voltron when it comes to, uh, let's say, reverse key engineering. Uh, and then this is like so the the green is uh, what ends up being the um, like combination of the two models right so then you get like the like uh, my model is uh, my model takes two measurements the KF the TS inverse takes another measurement so then we get those three measurements those three measurements are plotted individually the blue line is the true line the one that we want to match uh, and then the green is what happens when we combine those three data data sets like those three inputs those three dimensions of data and then we get them to plot <laughs> essentially by like right over the blue line essentially like there's i mean like a little bit of like you can see a little bit of area where where blue pokes out um and then you can definitely see where like ts inverse like there where the method itself like both of these methods alone wouldn't be the best but then when we combine them <laughs> it's it, into that that green i mean it's like uh, almost perfect like like this is the perfect key <laughs> essentially it is like a very close right to to the perfect key <laughs> is what we get when we when we combine them out and then i run another test different data set just to make like 100 percent sure right and as you can see like you know it, it's uh, here's the outcome <laughs> it's uh it, it the method works right so if if you want to like copy the the data key overall essentially if that's kind of like your goal right um within this you have a, a method for uh what is essentially a perfect reconstruction within this to to be able to do that <laughs> to uh whatever data set that you put into the model you can extract it without the data set itself um just again via these two this this algorithm what ends up being this combined algorithm right so one singular algorithm in order to uh, extract and reconstruct the data from a, like from a model um, without the data set itself and then so I can't stress this enough that like the impacts and the implications that this has for like um, data set security if you think that your data set is secure overall it's not right just literally needing access to the model itself is if you can get access to like the the gradients of the model you can reconstruct anything that is uh, within that model in terms of data with the right calculations and the right know-how in order to do that and then secondarily what this means is that like um there's uh, like no um like it's the the no inherent value in data itself <laughs> because like uh i can reconstruct and 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 train essentially like i need to know the shape of a, a data set right and then so within that like i can what this means is that i can take for whatever subject that that um i i needed to train the model on i could take um like a tenth of the data that i would actually need uh and then i could essentially like 
rebuild like once i could build a key from there essentially right i could build multiple spare keys from um that 10 percent. as long as i have enough in order to uh get the shape of it in order to do these calculations and and like create the spare key essentially right and then as long as i can create one spare key from it i can create unlimited spare keys from it um and then so overall like i like people are making the very wrong bets when it comes to data and very much like not understanding these things, not wanting to understand this particular aspect of it. I, I don't know, but like uh, this, like people are making their data like more vulnerable than like uh, anything imaginable is kind of the bottom line overall within this. And then uh, people are, are um, hoarding their data <laughs> in ways that like don't do them any good in the long run overall. It doesn't do anyone any good overall because people are just not knowledgeable of this. And I don't know how to disseminate this overall <laughs> more, but uh, there's going to be more and more research that comes out like and more and more methods that come out that showcase and prove these things, right? It's not just this guy coming up with, and making stuff up. <laughs> like, oh man, this guy's just, you know, pulling stuff out of thin air, like saying that you can just make up data sets, you know, like uh, it's not like other institutions are, are starting to to come out with these things. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. But so uh, here we go. Uh, it's like, this is a very interesting subject to me. So as more, if I assume that more and more research will come out along uh, this, proving this further. So I'll give you more as it comes out. If you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.